So holy wells are pretty much just exactly what the name says. They're wells that are considered to be holy. Um, they are most famous for their association with being able to cure people. So those cures include bones, um, sprained ankles, any type of wound to plagues even. And um, there are approximately 3,000 total in Ireland alone. A huge amount of the popularity of Holy Wells in modern Ireland, I think, stems from the period after the 16th century when uh, the penal laws were in force and Roman Catholicism as such was, uh, was discouraged by the authorities and was stamped out in lots of places. So people didn't have an active clergy ministering to their needs, neither did they have uh, an active health service of any kind. So um, other than what they had amongst themselves, doctors were extremely rare in peasant rural Ireland, if you want to call it that. There are a number of St. Bridget's Wells uh, throughout the country. Uh, some enjoy more popularity than others. St. Bridget's Well um, near uh, Kildare. And this is a very important uh, place for the cult of St. Bridget in modern Ireland. And what you in fact see at that place is uh, the Bridgeting nuns. These are a, series, uh, a community of nuns who are dedicated to St. Bridget. Uh, they visit there uh, around St. Bridget's Day, but also there is what you might call the New Age or Neo-Pagan element, people who uh, look back to the pre-Christian traditions of Bridget the Goddess and might find some uh, dedication or some relevance in that particular uh, area of belief. There are still people there that do um, holy patterns and rituals there to pray for loved ones who are sick or injured. Pretty much people go in with some sort of token, um, usually a ribbon or a piece of string, and they dip that ribbon or string into the water in the well, and then they tie it to a tree or a bush that's around um, the site. And then the hope is that as that ribbon or string disintegrates, the injury or illness that they kind of paired with that ribbon that they're praying for that that injury will disintegrate as well. I personally know of people that I spoke to when I was conducting field work and just in my researches that wouldn't even normally be um, conventional mass goers shall we say but still find some kind of relevance for them uh, in the holy world tradition. They find it less authoritarian perhaps it's more to do with um, <clears throat> the people, the community, and on a personal level, people engage with religious or spiritual traditions in a way that doesn't necessarily involve structures or church hierarchies or those kind of things. There's one story about um, a landlord that looked over um, a holy well in Liscamore, St. Bridget's Holy Well. Um, it was kind of eroding at that time, not kept up, and the landlord became very ill, and he went to the holy well, drank some of his water, and he miraculously became better, and he associated that cure with, his, with the holy well. So, in honor of that, he refurbished the holy well and built up more statues in honor of St. Bridget around it, and now it's a pretty famous holy well. It's a living tradition and it continues to grow and adapt, as it always has since the beginning of holy well traditions in Ireland. Um, <laughs> we did stuff, and it was okay. oh, academic, see. I think. For our project, um, we kind of began by just looking at books and written sources. A few that I used were as crossing the circle of the holy wells in Ireland, Irish pilgrimage, um, holy wells and popular Catholic devotion, and then revisiting the holy the holy well. And yeah, those just kind of gave us some base information about them. I interviewed Billy because he knows a lot of things about holy wells, and uh, he did. He did know a lot of things about holy wells, and it was very interesting. There was a lot that we couldn't put in the video that was also very interesting because of time constraints, but it was definitely a, a great experience of learning things. Trying to find a holy well to go to was very difficult because they're not tourist heavy, they're not touristy. We ended up having to go to the St. Bridges Well in Kildare. The bus took us to Kildare 
and then we had to walk 20 minutes out into the countryside just to get to the well, but it was definitely worth it. There were some people actually there doing the patterns. I had like the urge to ask them questions, but I also didn't want to like bother or disturb them while they were busy doing the patterns. Um, it was very peaceful and quiet and there was just like the running water and yeah, it was, it was really cool. Overall good experience.